One way to frame double stud walls is to frame the regular outer walls first and then frame another set of walls inside. Begin by butting some plate stock against the existing bottom plates. Measure the thickness of the wall that you want to end with and then measure back three and a half inches to signify where the perpendicular wall will sit. The three and a half inch mark will be a cut line later so that there's no framing connection between the inside and out. But don't cut it yet. It's easier to get the layout with the ends butted tightly against the other wall. Use a speed square or combination square to scribe all of the studs, including window and door openings. Speaking of window openings, when you scribe the stud placements, make the opening on the inner wall about a quarter of an inch larger on each side. The other thing is to frame the rough openings in the first wall larger than the window schedule calls for to accommodate window bucks made from leftover subflooring. The window bucks provide a continuous solid layer to waterproof and air seal to. Get the bucks a little narrower than the wall thickness. Because unlike animation land, actual wood is not perfectly sized or shaped, so it's good to build in a little wiggle room. The openings can be shimmed square on the inside later. That's pretty much most of it except for the interior wall tie-ins. Frame interior walls after the double walls are complete. Full height backing gives the insulators continuous backing to staple the netting to. If you use ladder backing, the insulation can puff out between the blocks and that makes drywallers crabby. Walls like this push the envelope on construction quality. And that's nothing to be crabby about.